Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back. And new video for you guys this morning. Wanted to do a check-in on the cut and how it's going. Uh, I've been tracking now for a week with the calories, the macros, weight, all that stuff. Um, workouts have been feeling really good, as you've heard in the vlogs. But I wanted to provide sort of a live overview of how that first week went, uh, where it fell, what we really learned from that first week, and take a look at also just what I ate. I think people are always curious, like, what are you eating right now? Uh, what are you consuming? How are you feeding yourself? And you know, what did you do right and what did you do wrong? So let's jump right into that. So I'm using the Macro Factor app to track all my food. Not sponsored in any way. I have no affiliate link, um, but I love this app. I've been using it now for about two years and it has literally never, never gone wrong for me. Previously, I mentioned um, in previous vlogs that I used to track this all on an Excel sheet and it got super cumbersome to try to run all these numbers, try to really figure out exactly um, what do my macros need to be, most importantly. This does all the calculating for you once you set that, that target and set that uh, level of nutrition that you wanna be at for whatever your particular goal is. So here, Monday the 4th was the first day of the cut, uh, officially the first day of the cut, I should say. I had been tracking my weight every other day prior to that for about a week, week and a half and monitoring what I was eating, you know, starting to kind of get back into the rhythm of it, so to speak. But I've done this enough times now that I don't really need to lead into it. I know I can just, bam, hit the ground running. So Monday morning, I woke up and you can see 4 a.m. Uh, is when I woke up to do my workout here and I was able to just consume my, my normal foods for my workout. I had my sugar-free chocolate syrup, the protein um, powdered peanut butter, and then the cream of rice. Now, the peanut butter powder is something that's new. Typically, I've actually never deviated away from using just plain old peanut butter in my uh, morning pre-workout cer uh, cereal, breakfast, whatever we wanna call it. But I decided to go with the powder this time just to give it a try to see how the flavor was, and I had really been enjoying it. So I'm gonna be sticking with it. It's a lower calorie option, which gives me some more flexibility during the day. Regular peanut butter, it's gonna give you those healthy fats. It's really heavy in calories though. I mean, it's certainly more than I think it's more than four times the total calorie amount compared to the powdered peanut butter. And the taste is different, but not in like a bad way. It, it's just, um, I don't know if it's more concentrated or what it is, but it's, for me at least, it's a lot more peanut buttery. And um, it mixes really well with the cream of rice too. That's, you know, been in the microwave for 45 seconds. It's still fairly moist. And that chocolate syrup just gives it that um, Reese's cup taste. The dextrose powder is something I drink during my workouts. I don't always add it in there. I add it in there when I know it's gonna be a particularly tough workout and I felt it was gonna be that way for this one. I've actually not been taking it most mornings in this last week and that's been doing me pretty well so far. I haven't been really hitting a wall during those workouts or anything like that, um, but I'm usually more inclined to do that on my leg days where it's just, it's exhausting, right? This was, you know, I actually don't even know. I'd have to look back on what kind of day this was with regards to the lift, but uh, I still added it in here, tracked it as I normally would. As you can see, it's 80 calories for two tablespoons worth. And that goes again into my infra-workout mix. I'm drinking that throughout the workout to kind of keep my body fueled. Moving on down here, uh, we came back inside from the workout and we immediately went into our post-workout meal. Now for this one, I, I was a little unprepared for this first day, I'll be honest. We hadn't done our grocery shopping. I had everything I needed, but it wasn't gonna be the most optimal or ideal setup to really fuel myself for the day and not be left super hungry or disappointed even, right? So we started out the day with some oat milk with the uh, my protein chocolate mint and then a Chobani cheesecake zero sugar yogurt. I gotta be honest, we bought those zero sugar yogurts because they were on sale for like, I think it was 12 of them for $10 at Kroger. They ended up being a massive disappointment. We were really, really, really disappointed with them. They taste very artificial. I mean, there's, there's no sugar in them. Uh, but when you compare them to the Oikos, I think that's how you say that, triple zero, which also has no sugar. Um, I mean, it's a night and day difference, completely different flavor profile. These tasted like a candy, and I can't remember off the top of my head which one it reminded me of, but I want to say it was like Jolly Ranchers or Starburst. It wasn't bad. They were good, um, but they just, for a Greek yogurt, first thing in the morning, I'm not really trying to eat something that tastes like candy. Um, again, not bad. This cheesecake one was actually pretty darn good overall compared to the, some of the other flavors we got, like the regular fruit flavors. Um, but 
I think we still have about four or five sitting in our fridge that we need to eat so they don't go bad, but we're kind of just spacing them out so that we're not eating one back to back every single day because they just truly aren't our type of flavor profile that we want first thing in the morning. I chase that down with some oat milk and whey protein, uh, super simple drink. I love, love, love oat milk on my protein. I don't drink a lot of milk, period. Um, I get my milk products through the yogurts and the whey protein that I drink. I don't, I don't like drinking too much more than that. It's not, it's not good for our bodies. Our bodies just aren't handled, equipped rather to handle that kind of um, milk content consumption. Um, but the oat milk, super creamy, super rich, not terribly calorie dense. And you can see here, it was only 67 calories in this 12 ounce serving. And the one scoop of protein, I mean, you've got a good 20 grams of protein between the two right there, plus the 11 from the, uh, the yogurt. So we got about 30 grams of protein post-workout, which was great. And then a little while later, I went back and made my iced coffee with my half and half. Uh, have one of those every single day, 45 calories, you know, drink it over the course of an hour or two, and really just enjoy about 20 ounces of that. Now, here's where things started getting hard. What I was not prepared for was actually cooking my chicken and beef for the day. Um, I had failed and forgotten to defrost some. I keep a stock in the fridge that I normally keep defrosted. And as I take one out, I'll put another one in there, especially for the chicken, a frozen one in there. And at the beginning of the week, which is what I did last night, I will process all that chicken. And by process it, all I'm doing is trimming off, you know, the weird bits and the fat, but then I'm also butterflying the chicken breasts. I keep them as one piece to make cooking them a little bit easier so there's not two separate pieces, but I butterfly them so that when I open them up and split it in half, um, it is literally so much easier to cook that thing evenly and more juicy in the air fryer or whatever we're cooking it on. So I literally cut it right down the middle, open it up, throw it in a baggie, and then I freeze a bunch of them at a time. I think I did 20 total pounds last night. That'll last me, you know, uh, probably two weeks or so, maybe a little bit less than that. But at the time, last Monday, I wasn't ready with these unfrozen chicken breasts, so I quickly threw some into some warm water, and they were ready to go by lunch, but I wasn't ready to eat any by like 10 o'clock or so, which is what I'm gonna be doing after this. Um, so that morning, I was starving. I was absolutely starving. I was in these meetings, and I was just like, oh my gosh, my body, my, my stomach was growling. I was so, so, so hungry. And this is just part of that adaptation process when you start a new cut. You've gotta go through those quote-unquote growing pains um, that your, your body's just used to you fueling it in, in a manner that you're not really doing anymore. So by noon, I was so ready to suck down all this food. I ended up having uh, 209 grams of chicken and 156 grams of rice. Um, great meal, I loved it. You know, my wife loves to tell me, well, when you're hungry, anything tastes great. But I remember that one being like an absolutely delicious meal. Um, and then for dinner, again, same thing. I didn't have everything ready to go, so I ended up having some rice. I had a whole pound, 500 grams of ground beef, some green beans, and these uh, grape cherry tomatoes that I've been loving. I had those with um, some spinach. I probably just didn't put it in here, but you can see at the bottom here, I, I wrote a note to myself about my meal spacing and making sure that I have things ready to go so that they're ready to eat, ready to be consumed, and I'm not just gonna be starving for four plus hours at a time. Um, I've been sticking pretty close to this for the rest of last week. This week, I'm gonna be changing it up a bit, trying to get a little bit more chicken instead of the beef, uh, but we have some friends who raised cows and have some phenomenal ground beef. Very, very, very lean ground beef. Honestly, this 95% lean might even be a little bit under what it actually is. It might be closer to 97%, uh, but it is so good and delicious with very little seasoning. I'm a big, big, big fan and believer of Mrs. Dash's seasoning. I don't like to use salt in my seasonings most of the time. Um, so Mrs. Dash, a little bit of garlic and herb or onion and herb, whatever and then a little bit of black pepper on top of that just to give it a little bit extra, if even that. But we're going very light with those seasonings, certainly not getting any caloric density out of that stuff. On to Tuesday. So again, uh, started keeping things fairly simple, but I wanted to experiment a little bit. I started my breakfast, this was an off day from lifting, so I started my breakfast, which was after cardio, with some liquid egg whites. Um, I had never had these before, I was pretty hesitant about them. They're phenomenal. I mean, you cook them up in a pan, just like a scrambled egg that cooks super duper fast. And I topped them with some reduced fat cheese, spinach. I had some low carb flour tortillas. And then again, another Chobani um, Greek yogurt. The breakfast wrap that I was able to make that with those egg wraps, I put a little bit of hot sauce on there and then the cheese and spinach was just absolutely phenomenal. It was really good first thing in the morning, honestly. And it was a very well balanced meal. You can see I got about 500 total calories out of it though. It's pretty calorically dense when you're only eating 2,000 calories a day, 
but I got 61 grams of protein, which was phenomenal. It was great uh, to get that that early in the day and spread it out across the day. Your meal timings aren't all that important. You know, it's good to try to get some protein right after your workouts, especially just to give your body that extra fuel that it's gonna need to continue to work and process. But it's not the end of the world if you can't immediately get, you know, 40, 50, 60 grams of protein after your workout. If you can give your body something after a workout, it's gonna thank you later. But I try not to worry too much about my overall spacing of these meals because I know that my body will be hungry when it's hungry and I'm gonna go eat when I'm hungry. If I've got the meals prepared or at least in mind, I'm gonna have the right proteins, carbs, fats kind of lined up throughout the day. And that's what I do at the beginning of every day is I go, okay, how did yesterday go? How did last week go? Do I wanna copy, am I copying anything from previous days or previous weeks? And sort of setting out the plan for the day and putting my meals in ahead of time, which is what I would have done for this day right here. So probably while I was eating breakfast, I put in my uh, drinks. I had a cold brew from Starbucks that morning and I added a little bit of sugar-free pumpkin spice creamer that I had at home. Um, and then I didn't eat again until 12. So once again, wasn't really well prepared for that early morning meal. But after that first day, I didn't terribly struggle with those 10 or 11 a.m. cravings like I had on that first day. They're there, they're, they're not non-existent, but that first day was really, really rough. And I think I've adjusted pretty well overall to it. However, I am trying to be very mindful as long as I have the meeting availability to actually getting a meal in around 10 or 11 so that I'm not just you know eating all this food all at once, especially at the end of the day. I'm gonna talk about that here in a second. It just gets to be almost too much. So we have our chicken and rice again, 150 grams of rice, 162 grams of chicken. You can see I backed down on the rice from the previous day, trying to save a little bit of those carbs for later on in the day, maybe give myself some kind of snack, like a little bit of popcorn, skinny pop, wheat thins, a little bit of that kind of stuff. You know, it can really go a long way here. And then the game, again, same thing with dinner. I backed down on the rice, um, mostly because I felt like I had to, because I also wanted a little bit of that cheese. And then I had my spinach and tomatoes once again. I didn't track my spinach. I do some days. Honestly, the amount of spinach you would need to put on a plate for it to count to any caloric density is like kind of crazy. We're talking like a, like 35 grams of spinach would be where you want to maybe start tracking, and uh, if even that. And this is like an enormous plate of just fresh uh, baby spinach. It's, it's a lot of spinach to eat. It's a good sized salad and it's going to end up being like tens of calories, like literally 10 to 20 calories, I think. But really, really, really enjoying it with these grape tomatoes. I got some cherry and grape tomatoes last week. They were phenomenal. They were just from Kroger, but um, you know, you don't always have fresh tomatoes in season from farmer's markets or friends who grow them. And these were substantially uh, meeting my expectations. And I ended up getting some more this week to throw on those as well. So finished out the day again with another pound of beef. And this is where it was starting to get to be a little bit too much to eat in the evenings. After this day, the next morning, I was really feeling the fullness of eating all that rice and all that beef right at the end of the day. So I really want to be cognizant of spreading those meals out. As I got later on in this week, I kind of learned my lesson and started to do that. Starting out here Wednesday, you can see that we didn't add the dextrose powder in uh, to our intro workout shake. Didn't have it that morning, but we still had our normal pre-workout breakfast with the cream of rice, peanut butter, and the sugar-free chocolate syrup. That's a staple. That's going to be there every single day that I'm lifting. When I have an off day and I do cardio first thing in the morning, I don't eat that. Um, don't really feel like I need it. And it allows me to have a little bit more calorie flexibility later in the day. It's only about 200 extra calories, but it's a small little snack I can have later. Skinny pop, you know, a whole bowl of that stuff is like 135 calories. So a little treat later on in the day. I'm not really feeling it by then. But then after I got done, I, I went right into my liquid egg whites again. Didn't do the wraps this morning, just had it topped with spinach and some tomatoes. You can see here I had 35 grams of, I really overestimated this. I had 35 grams of spinach and it was only eight calories. And again, 35 grams of spinach is like an, a whole plate full. So you're really like, if you're tracking how much spinach you're eating, you're counting calories, I think, in the wrong places. Just eat as much spinach as you want. I can't remember which coach always said that, bodybuilding coach always said that, but like throw as much spinach as you want on every meal. It's not going to hurt you. It can only help. It's actually a pretty decent source of protein for what it is. I mean, it's a leaf, 35 grams, one gram of protein. I mean, you're not going to be doing anything crazy with that, but hey, anywhere you can get extra protein is fantastic. I had my normal coffee with the pumpkin spice creamer. I want to say this was the last day that we had the pumpkin spice uh, sugar-free creamer, but I may have gotten one more day with it. And then for lunch here, um, I had my chicken breast topped just with tomatoes and some spinach. Love putting fresh air fried chicken breast on a pile of spinach and tomatoes. It is absolutely delicious. It's a great little salad, so to speak, and a nice light lunch that is just, it keeps you full through the day. Proteins will keep you fuller. So 
if you can eat a good sized meal that has an abundance of protein in it, it will help keep you a little bit fuller for an extended period of time. And that was carrying me throughout the day. But however, here I started to trade in uh, an afternoon snack. And I ended up going with the low fat, plain, 0% sugar Chobani yogurt. Absolutely love this stuff mixed with half a scoop of protein powder. It is phenomenal. It is delicious. I love the tanginess of it, particularly with the mint chocolate chip. It is just fantastic. Really good snack. Give it, give it a go. 150 grams of yogurt and a half a scoop of protein powder. Absolutely fantastic little treat in the middle of the day before we got to dinner. So again, ground beef, another pound of ground beef later on in the day. I think I split this meal in two, but I just logged it as one. Uh, but I had uh, a whole pound of ground beef over the course of the evening. And then I had a bag of the Brussels sprouts from Kroger, frozen Brussels sprouts. I absolutely love air frying these things. And it is so simple. I think it's like, I think it's like $1.50 a bag for these. And you get uh, an abundance of calories, 180 calories, good calories, some good protein. And then I just use a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. I have 10 grams listed on there. I literally have like a sprayer that is one gram per spray and I just give it 10 total sprays while I toss them around, coat them in a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper and they are just phenomenal. 10 minutes to unfreeze them, coat them with, uh, take them out, coat them with the oil, salt and pepper and then eight more minutes and they come out perfectly cooked, perfectly crisped and they are just a delicious little thing to have with your meals. Highly recommend you guys give that one a try. Moving on to Thursday. Same thing, another workout day, very similar breakfast as you're gonna see before. We had our zero sugar uh, Chobani and then we added a little bit of protein um, granola to it. Love the bare naked granola. It's very, very good. It tastes great. It doesn't taste too sweet and it just adds a little bit of oomph to the, to the Greek yogurt. Um, that extra little bit of heft makes it just that much more filling and rewarding to eat and it comes with extra protein packed in it too. So you're really getting some bang for your buck there and it's not very expensive for a bag. You're only using, I'm only using rather, about 30 grams per cup. So I just, you basically just fill the cup up from wherever the yogurt is to the top of that cup and it comes out to be about 30 grams, which I think is a quarter cup. Don't quote me on that, but it's another 130 calories, keeps me fueled for a little while and it'll get me through that, that morning. Had my iced coffee, came in to lunch with some chicken breast again, spinach and tomatoes. Again, you can see me tracking. Here I had 76 grams of spinach, 17 calories. So. Again, you're not gonna break your diet eating as much spinach as you want. Um, I go through one of those really big tubs of spinach from Kroger that are like this long and like that deep in a week. Um, and it lasts me almost perfectly. But if you can eat that thing over the course of the week, you're just gonna be getting some good nutrients and nutrition from your leafy greens that you may otherwise not be getting if you're worried about going over on your calories, which for spinach and tomatoes, you certainly should not. Now I do track the tomatoes. The tomatoes are a little bit more calorie dense. Uh, five tomatoes is about 15 calories. It doesn't seem like nothing, but if you're doing that two or three times a day, that adds up and it can quickly add up to 100 calories if you're not too careful. Now for dinner, this is where I did something just different. Austin had told me about riced frozen cauliflower. I had never even heard of it. And he was like, it's actually really good. Uh, it didn't taste like anything. And I'm like, I'll give it a try. So I got a bag from Kroger. Kroger. Um, actually, my wife picked it up for me and I cooked a little bit in the skillet basically browned it a little bit and put it out on a plate. 160 grams, it was only 40 calories. So 160 grams is 40 calories here as compared to yesterday's, I'm sorry, two days ago. When did we last have rice? 150 grams there was 195 calories. So, I mean, we're talking 160 calories less just from that rice cauliflower is a huge savings. Now you might be asking yourself like, why do you wanna have these savings? And if, if we scroll down here, you'll see. Um, I wanted a little bit of wheat thins. I like to have these little snacks, these things throughout the day that you can reward yourself with versus just these plain boring meals. Don't get me wrong, they're, they're boring, but they're very good and filling. The rice cauliflower doesn't taste like anything. I'm, I'm gonna equate it to like tofu where it really just tastes like whatever you put it next to. Um, but super simple to cook. You can do it on the stove or in the microwave. I'm actually gonna be doing it in the microwave here shortly because I haven't tried that yet. Um, Highly recommend it, very cheap, great source of some carbs, but you're not gonna overdo it and you can eat a bunch of it and not get a ton of calories, which is great because it's gonna leave you fuller for longer for less calories. Now that evening, I had a nice little snack. Around seven, I had some wheat thins on top of my, um, my Chobani protein um, snack. So I had a half a scoop of protein with 300 grams of yogurt at that time. Uh, went all in on the, on the yogurt because I had some extra calories left over and you can see I was still 200 calories short here 
um, at the top left, about 200 calories short for the day. So had some room to play with there, ate those, pounded some uh, wheat thins, absolutely love those things. A little bit of salt was just absolutely perfect for me. Great end of Thursday. Now, Friday into the weekend, this is where things, and I, I mentioned this on the gym blog, but this is where things started to turn. I felt like I was really rapidly losing weight and I wasn't very happy with that. Um, I was down seven pounds by the end of the week based on, by, by the scale weight. And that's not the trend weight that macro factor calculates, but on the scale weight, I was down about seven pounds. And that's an aggressive amount of weight to lose in just one week. So it was here that I was like, I think I need to eat extra. Um, this was very, very, very much planned. I wanna start with that. This was not just like a Friday binge or even a Saturday and Sunday binge because I ended up doing it on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But I really felt like I was underfeeding myself a bit there and needed to make up for that. So Friday I ended up eating an additional 700 total calories. And you can see we started out the day with our egg whites. We had some granola with our, um, with our yogurt. And then we put onto those egg white wraps some spinach, cheese, tomatoes, and then that salsa. Um, salsa huge step up, huge, huge, huge step up in those burritos. Very low calorie amount. I mean, just a little bit goes a long way in these little tiny burritos. And so two tablespoons, 10 calories, absolutely worth throwing on these burritos for that extra flavor. I got the medium, has a little bit of heat to it, not unbearable. I love hot things, but I gotta be mindful of the other people in my house too, just my wife really, and the things she likes to eat and, and she doesn't like it too spicy, so I knew she would be okay with just this medium here. And it was a phenomenal flavor profile. I've been using these low carb wraps that are, one is like tomato basil and the other one is spinach wrap, I think. They are absolutely fantastic. You can see here at the top, they're 50 calories each. They're really tiny little wraps. They're very stretchy though. Um, and they don't feel inadequate for the size of the meal that I'm putting inside of each of them. Had my iced coffee around eight and then at 12 again, I had some chicken with some spinach, probably put some tomatoes on there and may or may not have. Now here's what I did for dinner. I ended up having an entire these ultra thin pizzas from DiGiorno are fantastic. They're like a thousand calories each, 1100 calories each, sorry. And that put me just over my calorie allotment for the day, which I was fine with. Cause again, I had planned to do this. I was like, I need to get some extra calories. And I was like, well, what do I want to eat? If I'm going to get extra calories, like what do I want? We didn't really have any snacks in the house that would help me get there readily. I wasn't just going to eat like 10 pounds of goldfish. So we went to Kroger, I got these pizzas. They had a good amount of protein in them, which was great. I was thankful for that. Um, and then a lot of calories as well, which helped me get a little bit over where I needed to be. And then I had uh, the goldfish to top it off at the end of the night as well, which I just love goldfish. And it was a great way to bring in that extra 500 calories. Yes, I ate 100 grams of goldfish. It's like a whole bowl of goldfish. They were phenomenal. Um, and when you've been cutting all week and you need those extra calories, they go down really quickly. Saturday. Um, okay, so we had another uh, another workout day, but we worked out later on in the morning. Austin came over for a leg day. You will see that video soon. Um, we had some beef around 10 in, inside of a burrito. Um, absolutely great little meal. 200 grams of, of beef was perfect. And then we came back home a little bit later and around one, I had some chicken breast deli meat, some hun uh, honey ham deli meat, and then I put those into some tortillas and then I had a side of ground beef with that as well. Um, made some wraps with those, great little lunch. Again, these wraps, they're not huge, but they're, they're nice and filling. It was 500 total calories there with 70 grams of protein. Great little meal, really helped with my recovery. And then we ended up not eating anything again until about six or seven. Now I got these little snacks, these seaweed um, salt snacks. They're 30 calories each in each of these packs. I gotta be honest, the plain sea salt ones were not very good. I ended up putting a little bit of a dab of sriracha on them and they were fantastic, but they have other flavors. So far I've tried the teriyaki one and that one was fantastic. It truly tastes like you're eating a sushi roll, um, the teriyaki one does. And again, they're 30 calories. I think the, the flavored ones, they're bigger packs, so they're 60 calories or 50 calories each, but a great little snack just to keep something kind of moving through your body and it, um, you know keeping a little bit of taste in your mouth versus just drinking water or some kind of diet drink. Now, the pizzas that I got the day before, they were buy one, get one, so I ended up buying a second one. Um, had that again, and again ended the night with some more goldfish. I went a little bit heavier today. I was very, very exhausted on Saturday. Um, I felt very brain foggy. We had that really hard leg day earlier in the day, but I didn't feel like I should be that tired, and I was starting to get a little bit concerned with how much weight I had lost by that point in the week. So I went really hard on the goldfish and the pizza, went well over my calorie allotment by 1,000, 
really thinking that I was, I, I thought the algorithm was gonna be pretty far off, the macro factor algorithm for what I actually needed for my calories for the week. Um, we'll get to that in just a second here. So I was being super, super conservative and um, with regards to losing weight and cutting calories, I wanted to try to get as close to maintenance as possible. And I thought somewhere between that 25 and 3000 mark was right around where I needed to be to be maintaining. So that's what I did for, for three days in a row. Yesterday, I backed it off just a little bit. I only went 400 calories overboard. Um, but again, very intentional, wanted to make sure that I didn't overdo it. However, I was a big dum-dum and I didn't eat anything at all until two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I got super hyper-focused on working in the gym. I hung up all those new lights. It took about five or six hours. And by the time I was done, I was like, wow, I'm really hungry. It's like one o'clock, um, nearly two. So I came inside and I ha we had some protein bars by kind. I had one of those packs, I had some of the seaweed um, snacks, and then I cooked myself a quick chicken meal that I wrapped um, in these low carb wraps with some cheese. It was like one of the best wraps I've ever had, probably because of how hungry I was. My wife was right in that moment. She said like, well, when you're that hungry, everything's delicious. And that was like the best wrap I've ever had for sure. But we ended the day uh, later with some rice cauliflower, Brussels sprouts and beef. And then the second serving of beef with some skinny pop and uh, wheat thins as well. Overall, a pretty good week. By the end of the week, I was really concerned about how many calories I was losing. Uh, I'm sorry, how many pounds I was losing and how many calories I was eating. So I did try to be quite conservative with regards to what macro factor had been estimating. My workouts have stayed the same. My cardio has stayed the same. I'm doing cardio every day, an hour, one to two times a week. And then my workouts, you know, basically six days a week at this point, my lifting workouts. And so I really thought maybe the macro factor algorithm was off based on, you know, my previous usage. That's what it was, it was going off of. But it had been some time since I had religiously tracked everything. So I was like, maybe it's a bit off. I'm going to up the calories just a little bit here. I've lost literally seven pounds by, the, by a Friday morning. And I didn't really want to lose any more before the end of the week. That was just way too much. Now, this morning I woke up and every week macro factor has to check in on Monday mornings. It is Monday morning. Uh, you can change the day of the week. Mine's set to Monday. Um, but when it updated and changed, I was surprised it, it didn't really change my target consumption at all. It actually gave me 50 extra calories a day, which isn't really anything. It's something, but it's not much. Um, so it hasn't really changed anything for me. We'll see if that stays true for next week. I don't think it's going to change much. I guess that is what my body needs to be eating. And if we look at my weight trend here for the last week, you can see we started at about a little over 226. Um, and the dark purple bar without the dots, that's my actual scale weight. You can see down there on Friday, I was at like 221, 220-ish. Um, and that's when I was like, all right, that's a lot of weight to lose in like six days, five days. Um, so I started to eat a little bit more calories, but my trend weight continues to come down. So happy with that result. I think if there's a lesson that I would tell you is that trust your gut, trust your instincts, let the app and the algorithm learn for you. If you've never done something like this, it's going to take a couple weeks for it to get it right. But once it does, it's going to be pretty spot on. You just got to give it time to learn. Mine's getting dialed in here. I think it's pretty dialed in. I'm going to have to trust it a little bit and just you know, gut check myself that this is the right amount of calories to be eating at the moment, even though 2,000 calories seems awfully, awfully, awfully low at the moment. We're going to run with it. We're going to keep doing it for this next week. We'll see how we're looking again at the end of this week. If it's the same thing again on Friday where I'm like down five, six, seven pounds once more, that's just going to be too much. I'm going to have to up those calories and then maybe reconfigure the app to give me a little bit more calories daily, 200 or so, just to not be so depleted by the end of the week because that feeling Saturday morning was just was horrible, even after eating that pizza on Friday night. So uh, currently down about two pounds, uh, which is great. That's exactly where we wanted to be, 1.7 pounds. Um, so if we can get between 1.5 and two pounds every week, we're going to be in really great shape here over the next two and a half, three months. Um, and we're going to keep tracking everything. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the overview. I hope this was helpful and beneficial for you. If you've got questions, if you've got comments, if you have recipes or, and healthy snacks for me to try, leave it down in the comments. We'd love to hear that. Uh, and if you have questions at all about the app, about tracking, about training, about any of the cutting stuff, please put it down there in the comments. Let me know. I'm happy to talk about it, happy to discuss. I want to share this knowledge. I don't want to make it some locked vault of information. I think it should be available to everybody and not so difficult to understand. So please let me know your thoughts. Happy to respond, happy to help. Thanks again for being here. We'll see you guys soon on the next workout vlog, and I hope you enjoyed this again.